Hey, what's up? How's it? Aloha. Welcome to Culturized. It is me, McCunny. This is the space we get to, ch- uh, to talk, share, and learn culture, whether it's ethnic, whether it's native, whether it's social, and of course, uh, our host culture of Hawaii. And uh, we always have to do and start our shows with protocol, and that's how we do it. So uh, if you're joining us, this is how we start anything and everything in Hawaii uh, to make sure that we are following culture. Kili my loka wigigaye, ke mahala malama ua mahalie, aha malie pagai nuvai, ke inu maila, na halo na wigigaye, no na we, ta hala, no puna davahine, no ta lua no ikila we, alohae, aloha kako we, alohae. Oh, mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. Uh, so if you folks are joining us, I'm, I'm humbled, I'm excited. Uh, we are going to be talking culture. And the two people in front of me uh, have, uh, have, have, have that. They, we're going to talk story about what they've been doing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, got them. Ken, here we go. <laughs> How's about a, a round of applause if you're at home? Uh, Twinkle and our good friend James. How are you, brother? Good, good. How are you? Hello, Hello. Good. Hello for having us. Um, I want you if you if they look familiar, right? I want to give out for Twinkle first some some titles and some accolades, right? Community leader, advocate, governor of the Puuhonua, um, Makua. You're a parent. You're a grandparent. All these titles because of uh, where you are at the pool. What, what is more important to you of all those titles? Or even if you, even if you had to put them in a category? Um, for me, I would just rather be called mama. Nice. Everybody, right. I mean, even the ones that is older than me, the kupunas, they call uh-huh. me mama. Kind of crack you up when they do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you are at Pu'uhonua, and you are, you, you're with, so Aloha lives here. Is that, is that just the, the Instagram? Because that's, that's how I reached out to you folks. Yeah, a lot of this here is just kind of the um, updating and fundraising website for the Puhonua. Okay. Yeah. So because we're a cultural show, that, and you know how local people are, right? This is, we always have the protocols like that, of course, uh, we share lay, but Twinkle, what high school you went? Kaimuki High School. Kaimuki? Graduated. Nice. Yes. Uh, grew up where? Palolo housing. Palolo, wow. Yeah. Palolo area. Nice, and that and that's of course when when Palolo wasn't that Palolo was country, right yes. at the time. Yes. <laughs> uh, Nothing like it is today. Right. Yeah. Uh, where, where specifically in Palolo? Where was where was your kuleana? Actually, one block coming in from McDonald's. So oh, so you were like right at, there. Yes. What? That's my like cousins ten, ten. all lived in housing, so that's where you would always find us. Yeah. What What was it like? At that time, growing up in Palolo, because I I've, I envisioned Palolo because that was kind of like you had the best of both worlds. You was a little bit towny, but you was a little bit country, right? Oh, well, I never moved to the country until two thousand. But I mean, but just you like know, yeah. But living in Palolo, it uh. was we fought a lot. <laughs> and was that by choice or by defense? <laughs> That's just how things That's how, yeah, right? You know, it's nothing like how it is today where mm-hmm. we saw adamant about our kids going to school. Mm-hmm. Back then, we knew mom and dad not going to get up till 5 p.m. <laughs> They're not going to answer the phone. We pull out the plugs. <laughs> <laughs> we did that kind of thing. So where, where, was, where, was the, where was the Palolo hangout when you were growing up? The gym. That was the best place to be. Um, gr- growing up in, in Palolo. Culturally, um, what what is your ethnicities? Hawaiian, Filipino, Chinese. Hawaiian, Filip- yeah. What was what was more prominent in the house? Hawaiian culture, Filipino, or all of them? All. Wow. So you yeah. were lucky. Yeah. You were lucky. Um, gr- was was it? Did you grow up with your parents or grandparents or My all? My parents. Were were they? You know, we grew up in culture. Some parents they teach you, they tell you what to do. And some you just had to observe. I always ask that question. Was your family, in, you had to observe what they were doing? Yes. Well, what, kind, what kind of cultural things do you remember learning when you were young? It wasn't so much cultural. Uh-huh. My dad had his own canoe club, Sons and Daughters of the Pacific. That's very cool. I remember. Yeah. Wow. And um, we've always had people staying with us. 
So it wasn't just one culture in our house. Mm -hmm. It was many different culture in our house. And I think that's where I got it from. Be I mean, because the canoe culture in and of itself is yeah. an entirely different culture. So even when the Hokulea first came back, uh -huh. and we, was, uh, we took the kids from Pohonua, to, you know, I want them to know what it's like because I'm just learning about my culture. And they had this filming that was going on, and I could hear Mahana's sister talking. And as I turned, I looked. I couldn't believe that was my dad standing up with his paddle up in the air. And as my sister was sharing Pauai, Iwana, as she was sharing and saying that sons and daughters was the first ones who went put up the paddle, it was chicken skin. Hold that thought. We're talking culture palolo right now with Twinkles right here on Culturized. Bringing you what matters. Viewers can receive the Star Advertiser digital full access subscription for just $9.95 per month. Go to StarAdvertiser.com and click on subscribe. Use the code AHIGHTHING. Bank of Hawaii, welcome to tomorrow. Member FDIC. Thanks a lot for joining us right here at Culturize. We're sitting down with my good friends. I, I wanted to get back to that, your, your dad's canoe club. That was the canoe club back in the day. Yes. The, I think everybody right. <laughs> either paddled for, hung out, went through, and was always there. Um, so you, growing up in Palolo, culture was the canoe culture was huge. For me, honestly, uh -huh. I never look at it that much like that. So it was just, it was just. What I was you... the youngest. I was the youngest out of all of us. So it was. So are you gonna go paddle? Do I have to run? Yes. No. <laughs> no. I don't want to run. <laughs> you, you, know? you got you got to to do that. So, uh, Palolo, James, where'd you go to high school? Ooh, you gotta put that on blast. Uh. Oh, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> get ready for it. Puno. Nice, <laughs> which is a good balance because so far we've ha we've been having a lot of Kamehameha school kids. Punoho, so you grew up where? Kaimuki. Wow, okay, yeah. so you guys, okay, say Mahu Pua, Kaimuki. Um, now is Punoho like like Kamehameha, did you go from like kindergarten? Oh yeah, I went, I went K-12 all, wow. all the way. You're, you're a Punoho lifer, yeah, and buff I was, and blue lifer. And you know, it's different, it's different now. They teach more about, you know, the real history of Hawaii and you oh, know no. culture now, but I like when that. I went there, not at all. No, not at all. What is your ethnic background? I'm Japanese. Yeah, yeah. Growing up in Kam in your so you would be sons sons. What what generation are you? Fourth generation. Oh wow. Yeah. Were were your parents and grandparents still very uh, culturally? Or just no. more, more local Japanese? Definitely local Japanese. Um, it wasn't until. I was an adult, mm -hmm. and in fact, when I went away to school on the continent, that I really started to learn about kind of the history, you know, and culture of Hawaii, and then my family's kind of connection to it. Too. And and what about so Japanese? When did when did you realize? I ask this question a lot too. No matter what ethnicity you are, when did you realize? Like you were just saying, you went away to school. When did you realize you were Japanese? Oh, probably not until like my twenties, like when I had the. Experience. I mean, I knew I was Japanese, mm. but and, yeah, it, <laughs> but then when you come into contact with an environment where people identify you based on your race, that was like a That's, shock to me. I was like, "Whoa!" Because you were thinking, "I just I'm from Hawaii. Yeah, I'm from Hawaii." Yeah, and then the you know the Asians on the continent mm. they identify themselves as Asian first, mm. and then whatever else afterwards. So that was totally foreign to me. Wow, you know, I was like, this That's is a, bizarre. So I had to a, get used to it. Now, I always see that as a plus because the more you understand Hawaiian culture, you understand your Japanese culture, and that's a plus for you. Do you remember, were there little things growing up that you think in your adult life now, oh, that was very Japanese? I mean, of course, we take off our shoes, right? Um, uh, bondori, mm -hmm. right? All those things. Did you guys do things like that? Only, only occasionally. Mm -hmm. You know, I okay. think, um, I, I guess, you know, to go back to that thing about I didn't realize it until... Uh -huh. I went away to school uh -huh. is it wasn't that I didn't know I was Japanese right. and wasn't that I wasn't proud of it right. but um, to have it be, be have other people kind of forcing uh, you into a box or to you know to make that your only identity yeah that was that was different so I think for me there was a difference between kind of knowing my culture mm -hmm. growing up and being able to use it in my life versus like someone else telling me oh that's who you are you know I like that. See, and then that's, I think we always fall into that because, you know, no matter what ethnicity you are, there's this phrase that I always, I, I can never get over when people ask. They say, oh, uh, oh you're, or they say, you're not Hawaiian enough. You're not Japanese enough. You're not, you're, but how, 
well, who's who set the standard of how enough is enough, mm. right? Um, but the fact that we use these cultures growing up, and even a local culture, and and we know no matter where you're from, I mean, you both from Kaimuki, but at the same time, culturally, there were things that were different. But at the yeah. same time, we all ended up for the the same thing. Now, both of you have. When did you folks meet? Oh, 2015. Yeah. So six years ago. Because yeah. you folks met, um, and interestingly enough, because of a project, right? And and Pu'uhonua o Waianai. Explain that. Like, so let's say this. Um, I want you to think about this because I, I heard you said it before. A hand up, not a handout, right? Not a lot of people understand that. If you're joining us, this is culturized. Uh, if you're on YouTube, hit the uh, notification bell, subscribe. You want to learn about culture. We're going to be talking about culture within the homeless and the houseless community and how important it is because Pu'uhonua has created a culture, but they also use culture within uh, their Pu'uhonua right here in Culturized. This show is sponsored by Hawaiian Telecom, Hawaii's technology leader. For all your money needs, Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union is here for you. Visit HiFiCU.com. That's HiFi, letter C, letter U, dot com. What's up, how's it? Aloha, if you're joining us, welcome to Culturized. It is me, McCunny. Uh, we are sitting today talking, sharing, and learning about not not the homeless culture, not the houseless culture. We're talking about the culture within. Pu'uhonua owai anai. Um, is, is, so we, I remember somewhere I read that you always say it's a hand, a hand up, not a handout. Surprisingly, not a lot of people understand what that is. Expl explain that. Um, <clears throat> well, I, I've been to other areas and mm -hmm. encampments and when they see all these donors come, mm -hmm. you know, I see people go out, I, I see what I see. Mm -hmm. I try to bring back into our village. That's not what it's about. If we can give back, we will give back. Whether if it's in our village or outside in our community. Um, I'm not for handouts. I am for hand ups. Mm -hmm. Even with my young guys that I do have in a village that hasn't completed school, mm -hmm. we found a way to get them to get back into school, to get their diplomas. Today, three part of them is working. You know, so that's one hand up. Um, out of my kids breaking up barriers, having two summa cum laude's, out, out of my kids, that's one hand up. Wow. That's breaking barriers. Right. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to plant in them that it's all about taking. Right. When you got to get back also. Mm. How how long now? The Puhanua Owai and I. How many years has it been now? Because you've been there for how many years? Since two thousand and three. And prior to that, was it, it it existed as well? I mean, there were people there during that time. We had maybe like about seven, seven to ten of us there. Um, as they started doing the sweeps mm -hmm. around the island, that's when people started coming. You know, and then I told myself like, oh, nobody knew actually was in a in a bush area. Right. You know, it was like two minutes away from society. Things started happening around in a community, and we was getting blamed for a lot of things, and that's when I knew I needed to put things into order. And that's when I started placing the rules, um, even for the kids. Um, today I have people doing community service hours. Um, it's mandatory for everybody in the village to do security since the pandemic started. You know, just to keep not only our kupuna safe, but our kikis also. What, what was it that, I mean, you, you said you, you realized things were going on in the community and you had to put your foot down. Um, was was what was the feeling? Was it a sense of kuleana? Was it a sense of 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 this is what I I'm supposed to do? This is what I need to do? Was it a dream? Was it a what was what was your what was you your know, in that? Um, I've been cleaning for over fourteen years now. Mm. Awesome. And I remember one day my mom said, both parents became ministers. So oh, Twinkie, how about you on Bible? What you want on top? I said, oh, evangelist Twinkle Boys, and I started cracking up laughing because she didn't even know I was in freaking Ordell. <laughs> so she actually came um, to the to the village with one Bible that said evangelist Twinkle Boys, and I started cracking up. And I started listening to Sir Shirley Caesar saying, go eat there for teach our nation. And I wanted to be like Benny Hinn, you mm, know, because Benny yeah, Hinn yeah, traveled yeah. the world. 
and I started laughing. I said, oh God, you cheated me out on this. I said, because you brought every nation to me in this village. So I had every nation you could think of, every culture you could think of in our village. I know that's my, that's my mission. And you, and you, you decided to stay. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you had a choice. Some people don't have a choice. You had a choice. Yes. Which, which brings me to the topic of, of this, too, that surprisingly a lot of people don't understand. Homeless and houseless. Two different things. Explain that. Because it, it, Hawaii is our home. Mm. You know, we're houseless in our own home. Mm-hmm. And for me, that's a shame. That's a shame. Yeah. Um, I still have a hard time walking out, keeping my head up. We still face even within our own Lahui or look at these chronics. Not everybody in our village use. A lot of them got either the one who was paying the bills and whatnot passed away. It is what it is. And that's the stigma behind it. Now, yes. speaking of different cultures, how does a, a, a Punahou lifer buff in blue <laughs> find his way, right, in, in helping? what? Yeah, so for, for me, it started actually with um, <clears throat> getting back in touch with the story of my, my great-grandfather. And so he was the first person on either side of my family to come to Hawaii. He came from Japan when he was 14, came on the boat by himself, and he came to work the plantation in Kahului. Um, Hold that thought for me because I want to remind people, if you're joining us on YouTube, hit the notification bell, subscribe. We got the extended version that you can always join us at. Go to our website, culturize.com or YouTube. Culturize, brought to you by Beachside Roofing, the leaders. Poncho Solar is specialized in providing energy solutions throughout Hawaii since 1987. Call us at 808-773-7384. Once again, thanks a lot for joining us. This is Culture Rise. We're talking about how Kaimuki raised, born and raised, Punahou educated, and you found your way because Tugel just said so many different cultures are within this Punahou Nua, and you found yourself working with, working for, and it started because you got in touch with your ancestry. How did it continue that? So my, my grandma, before she passed, I would have her tell me all the stories of our family. And sometimes she would write them down or I'd write them down as she was talking. And I was going back through those stories. This is probably 2000, maybe 2007, 2009, around there. She had already passed away. But I started reading the stories that she told me about my great-grandfather, her father. So he was the first person in our family to come to Hawaii. He came from Hiroshima, Japan at 14 by himself. He left the rest of his family there. And he came to work on a plantation in Kahului. And he only lasted like two days on the plantation. He was like, he this, was like this, no this was some <laughs> false advertising. You know what I mean? Right, like this is not right. as it was sold to us. So he ran away from the plantation. And somehow he made his way from Kahului to Hana. I don't know how he did. This is like 1890. That's amazing. This is 1890, right? He was like one of part of the first right. wave of immigrants to come. Say. And so... In Hana, he's he's taken in by a Hawaiian family. He was Hanaied by them for 10 years until he was 25. And then he comes back to Kahului at age 25, meets my great-grandma who just comes off the boat, and that's how our family starts in Hawaii. But by the time he came back to, um, to Kahului, he could speak fluent Hawaiian. He could dance hula. You know, he could emu the pig. He would get invited to all the luau, you know, in Wailuku because he was this novelty, like, you know, this short Japanese guy that, knew all the, <laughs> that could do all that stuff. And um, I thought to myself, like, where else in the world would that happen in 1890, you know? And I, I did some homework on it, and, like, this is what was happening in other parts of the world in 1890. Like, apartheid was beginning in South Africa, anti-Semitism, there was the roots of that happening in Europe. You know, uh, in America, it was all about the Chinese Exclusion mm-hmm. Act. I mean, and here's a homeless immigrant teenage boy he like checks off all the boxes for the least mm-hmm. desirable mm-hmm. person in society and he's taken in by a family and raised by them for 10 years you know became part of their family and i was like if he got off the boat anywhere else yeah he wouldn't have made it of course I, you know? i'm i'm pretty sure there's hawaiian blood in you G- guarantee so i gotta say i share it's funny you're telling me that story because mm. dr shintani mm. as well that we were talking about off camera he for the longest time thought he was just japanese mm. 
Um, he is his Shintani's actually come about the same time as your great grandfather, uh, but they went to Niihau, and they married um, Hawaiian. Oh. <laughs> and so, that's what I'm thinking. Wait, I think you guys might have the same great grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's, then, yeah. that's amazing. And then the connection to Pohono was, you know, is seeing houselessness explode mm. in like 2005, mm. 2007. Like you know, growing up, you never see people. Living on the beaches or in the right. parks or on you know right. sidewalks, right. I was like, "What's going on?" And then and then people were getting swept. Like the government was like sweeping people in places, mm. and I was like, "How do we in a hundred years go from you know a culture where people were taken in and taken care of to this now?" You know, so that's why I started stalking Twinkle. I, I actually I, I pitched a tent in Kakako first, and I stayed really? there. I stayed there for. A little while, I built some relationships, and it's actually through those people that I got connected to to Twinkle. That's yeah. an amazing. So, j- again, it goes back to culture, right? You looked at your genealogy, you looked at your mookuha. What did your great grandfather do? And and you fast forward how many years? And I, I my mind is blown right now. So once you did that, when how did the meeting happen? I mean, so you're you're literally in a tent, right? And you were you're, so your whole goal was to meet. Yeah, it wasn't to meet. I knew of Twinkle at uh-huh. that time, and I did want to meet her. But the goal was just to build some relationships, like try to understand what people on the street were going through. And then it was through a friend that I met on the street. She got invited actually to this meeting with a guy that was proposing to build tiny homes out of abandoned boats. Yeah. And then my friend told me, oh yeah, so it's gonna be me, you, and then these two other guys, Twinkle and James Pokele, and I was like, oh, I'm there, I'm there. So that meeting turned out to be not that useful, except that we got to connect I, for I the like first this time. connection. If you, you wanna know more about connecting culture, to the Puhonu Hawaii and I and how they're doing it, these two are going to tell you on our extended version at YouTube. Hit the notification bell or subscribe. This is Culturize. Hey, what's up? How's it? Aloha. Welcome to Culturize. Uh, you are getting the extended version. This is where we get good. We're, this is the meat of it. Now we're, we're going to dive deep. Uh, I'm sitting with uh, my good friend James and Twinkle because, you know, we're, we're talking... It's a huge topic in Hawaii, homeless, houseless. We know about the Pu'uhonu Owai'anai, but something I, when I look at that, I, I, I see it, but what I'm so interested in is the creation of this place. If you joined us earlier, Twinkle talked about how she felt this kuleana to establish rules um, and how to live together in this place. James, we, he dove into his ancestry, into his mo'oku auhau, and and that was his motivating factor. I want to I want to touch on that before we get into the the connection of you two. Why do you, or for both of you, I guess, why do you think people, not a lot of people, would do what you do. They wouldn't go pitch a tent and and have this desire to really want to understand. And which is the purpose of this of this show is because I want people to understand a little bit more about th- this this. Uh, see, I don't even like to call it a, a problem. Um, what do you think it is that people don't want to do that? Why why would they not want to get to know? I think we're so we're so separated nowadays, you know. And it's like Twinkle always says, like it starts with relationship. You got to build a relationship, but. Partly because of the way modern society is, you know, we're individuals separated in our own lives, just, mm. you know, on the... We're very, yeah, we're very, yeah, we're very um, what, what, what do you call, self-centric. Yeah, and, and it's possible now to be living right next door to someone who has a totally different experience from you, and then people are scared to, like, you know, make the connection, bridge the divide. Like, I, I know a lot of people that want to help around the issue of homelessness, but they're scared, you know, they're like, well, how do I go out and connect with people? I'm scared to do that. So this connection happens with you too. To go, how, when, when you started establishing these rules, right? Did, did, you, did you come at it from a cultural standpoint? Like you looked at, okay, this is how I was raised in Palolo. I was the youngest. So everybody had their own kuleana, right? Everybody had their, this is what you do, da, da, da. Um, when you started creating those rules, did you look at just Native Hawaiian culture? Because you said there was a lot of different cultures within the the Puhonua. Um, how did you? What was your thought process in doing in creating these rules? I had to create the rules um, 
they started sweeping um, sewers, Cal Beach Park. Cal Beach Park was the most of the bulk of the people. Mm-hmm. And for me, out in Cal, that was like no man's land. So they didn't really listen to any rules or anything. We needed to set rules only because the school started getting robbed and we was getting blamed. Oh, I you see. know, so mm. while I had our first huge meeting, I also invited city and county, I invited mm. the state to come on, I invited the Harbor Master, including the schools, and they couldn't believe that everybody showed up from the village because I made it mandatory. I made the ladies go through every tent and I said, you tell them to be at this meeting because if not, I will kick them right out. <laughs> So as you establish these rules, you had to get everybody together for these meetings. Now, besides your mana and your stature and your heavy hand, what? How did you? How did you convince these people? These are the rules, and this is what you're gonna do. Um, was it difficult? Did they? Did they give you pushback at the time? No, no. They, they just they, knew. They didn't even <laughs> give me any hassles. They kind of knew how I am, mm-hmm. even from growing up. They kind of knew I was that one person that, oh, you think you can. I'll take you on for a challenge, you know. Were your parents like that? Yes. So mom, that's where you got it from? My mom. Oh, yeah, I'm going to talk once. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I preach this, go back, just cover it. <laughs> now, because you, you, you were saying, James, you were saying something that, that and, and I truly believe in, in a phrase that, uh, that Twinkle uses all the time. And when you give somebody um, kuleana, what, what, did, what does she say all the time? Oh, she always says, a little kuleana wakes the mana up. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. That that's an ike bomb right there. I, I I call that an ike bomb because say it again. A little kuleana wakes the mana right up. Yeah. Explain yeah, that in in within the puhunu or waiana. You have all these people who are houseless. Um, you know they they kind of they 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 don't really know what their future is. And I even that I think because it's the kuleana. Explain that. So for me, when the people come in, I love to sit down. Mm-hmm. Talk with them, see mm. what it was, see where it come from, mm. what it's like, what they love to do. Um, we put on beautiful events. I do have a bunch of people in our in our village that can play beautiful music. I do have ladies in our village that dance the most beautifulest hula dance mm. you could see. But I also with every other culture, you come and teach us. So usually when we put on events, our kids will come out and dance for you. Our adults will come out and dance for you. And just giving them that little mm-hmm. spark means a lot. Because uh, is it fair to say some of them, they're just kind of lost at the time? Yes. Right? They're yes. kind of lost and, and you're giving them this kuleana. Um, how, you're there every day. Yes. That's are, you, are you there every day as well? No, or? I'm there like two or three times a week. Because yeah. this, this I love this relationship because you, you're advocating outside. Right for the Puhunua. Latest news for the Puhunua, which amazes me, is that you folks have land. Yes. <laughs> that, in and of itself, in it and was, of itself, it wasn't easy. I, I I can imagine. I mean, to acquire land in Hawaii on Oahu, for that matter, with the history of the Puhunua, um, how did that come about? <laughs> like we're, we're looking at each a, other lot of like, fi- a lot of fighting. Oh, how did it come? Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was it just. I mean, who it was it? Uh, honestly. I mean, honestly, it was. So in 2018, mm. the state was making plans to sweep the Puhonua and to evict like, everybody. And what? Yeah. And what did they expect everybody to go? Exactly. That's that's how. You know, so that's that's. So they don't really <laughs> have foresight to this. They, they're just like. Yeah, you know, this is. They were like, this is state land. You know, you guys are trespassing. Um, Did they want to do something to the land? or what? There, there was vague, vague intentions at that time that it was going to be either something for the school or mm-hmm. they wanted to do something else there. But, um, yeah, it was it was a lot of BS, actually, at the time right. that was motivating the, the sweep. And so um, the amazing thing and the, and the reason why, you know, I'm a fan of uh-huh. the village and Twinkle and why you know I'll, I'll do anything I can mm-hmm. to help support the village is that um, you know the the, twin, the the village Twinkle has built the village into an asset to the wider community you know totally so like that that mantra of using Kuleana to wake mm-hmm. the mana up what that translates into is like she has all these programs that run out of the village like people she mentioned security right mm-hmm. that's like a neighborhood watch on steroids <laughs> and, you know, 
love that. Two dozen people come out for and they patrol the, you know, the village and the surrounding area at night. And then she has an outreach program mm-hmm. where people from the village will go and pack up donated, you know, clothing mm-hmm. and supplies and go do outreach to mm-hmm. other houseless encampments like across the whole island, you know. And the uh, the beach and the park cleanups and, you know, repainting park bathrooms. I mean, these guys are they're an amazing model of community. And so that's, you know, I mean, really when it came to defending the village and then trying to come up with an alternative mm-hmm. plan, Twinkle had already done all the hard work of mm-hmm. building that community support because people knew her, they mm-hmm. trusted her, they trusted what the village was doing. And so they were like, no, we're not gonna let, let the state sweep our people. See, I'm, I'm amazed that the state doesn't see what you see, that see what we see. Like you you are an asset. It's And I, I would always say that, I said, they they clean this place. They malama this place. They it's be, it's become, you know, visitors want to see the place. Yes. With you talked about Hawaiian, you know, hula dan- hula dancers, musicians. What other cultures are are prominent at the Pu'u Honua? Um, uh, did you get someone right? Didn't yeah, you guys build a, a fale? Yes, we did. Is it still? Th- did somebody put in a complaint? Dale and R came in. They passed it like twenty times. There's somebody Wait. said you built a structure, and I said, mm hmm. He said, and they said, it's in here. I said, "Mm -hmm." (laughs) mm-hmm. And he goes, where's the structure? I said, maybe you should turn around and look the other direction. And he looked, he said, you so wise, Twinkle. I said, exactly. But my thing was, in a village, I wanted to build people their own culture Mm. in a way of healing. Mm -hmm. We have the Mm A-Fring. A lot of the locals, our Hawaiian people go there. We have something for the Samoans. Mm -hmm. I wanted something for the Micronesians also. Because we do have them in our village. And I like to research the history, then maybe it'll bring them a little bit closer to healing. Because mm-hmm. that's the part that I, yeah. I believe that we're doing. Yes, totally. See, that's, and that is what, that's the cultural. That's, that's, it's like YNI PCC. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. You can actually have people go there and learn Micronesian culture and learn Samoan culture, learn Hawaiian culture, learn Filipino culture, learn Japanese culture. Um, it's so amazing. I of course, we can go on for days and talking about how the government views it, but it's it's sometimes you just want to grab them by the ears. Like, what mm-hmm. are you guys not seeing? Like when he when mm-hmm. DLNR came and said, like, "I heard you built something." Just open your eyes. Yeah, it's right <laughs> just, it's, just, it's, just look. Make a quarter turn. So when somebody decided and said, "Okay, if they're gonna kick us out of here, where are we gonna go?" Was it a dream? Was it a, was it a, one of those conversations that was so bizarre? Like, hey. What if we go ask for land? You know, I even told my parents one day, if anything happened to us, I'm bringing everybody home. <laughs> and my dad started laughing, and my brother was like, he better not, because she would do that. Yeah. Because I would bring everybody home. Where, where, and you guys, you got the land? Yes. Where? Up in Wainai Valley, uh, right before Piliuka, Piliuka, right before the homestead. So we're actually on the left-hand side. If you come up Wainai Valley, you will see our sign, Pohonua or Wainai Mauka. Are you guys, is, are you folks already there currently or still developing? There are some of us there. Nice. So we've been taking care of the land cleaning. Um, we've done some planting. We do have ulu trees, um, about 114, um, just to be, to make us a little bit more mm-hmm. self-sustaining. Um, Another cultural concept. Yes, yes, Man. yes. Um, um, I do have animals there and the animals, they become my kids. So I do have a domestic <laughs> pig. Nice, nice. I have turtles and tortoises. Um, a miniature billy goat and a rabbit. I love that. Yeah. How, if someone wants to help you folks develop and, you know, just come help you guys Malama land and stuff like that, um, who, how can they just come up? Can they, I mean, of course, there's protocol to it. They can come up. They can come up or they can hit us up on our website on alohalipsia.org. Okay. Someone will communicate back with them. This, this is, it's, I love this because we, we now, because I truly think we have to look at our homeless and houseless culture from a different perspective, right? Yes. Um, because we're all we're all one one job away, one check away from being there, but we still all have the ability to practice culture. Yeah. Because I, I think about it, these are the few things I think about, and and we're talking about it earlier. No disrespect to the current Parks and Rec workers or state workers or anybody, but if you're where you live, you usually take care of. And if you're living on the beach and you're taking care of it, why not the state say, hey, here's your job, right? Let me pay you, let me pay yeah. you 
uh, to be where you are and clean up because there's a. I mean, I'm just gonna say it. There's a that lot. Of, there's, really a, there's a lot of state beaches that are like, mm-hmm. what's going on over here? So even alongside our coast during the pandemic, mm-hmm. they wasn't cutting the grass. They wasn't mm-hmm. taking care of the bathroom. About thirty to forty of us would go out, and then state would say, "Oh, but we cannot come on this side for cut." I said, "Why?" Oh, because a city. Also, you letting the lines dictate <laughs> dictate where we live. And then I just looked at our people. I said, "Let's crack Let's this." Let's just do it. You know. I mean, community started coming out. Mm. Oh, thank you guys. I can go, I, I can go, I can go, I can go, I can go. You know, so we started building that relationship by busting the stigmas mm. about houselessness. That's exactly you know? what it is. Because I think about it, Kavakahiko, way back in the day, like when your grand, great-grandfather came, um, exactly that. It's like, we were, the, the term homeless and houseless, you could have used that way back in the day. Um, but nobody was cultureless, right? And I truly yeah. believe that as long as you have culture, wherever you, wherever your two feet are, that's where you are. Yes. Um, mahalo, mahalo, mahalo to both of you for for being here today. Of course, and I know everybody's probably going crazy right now because Mama's not there, right? <laughs> is it like that? Is it? It is. Is it as though somebody just pulled the engine uh, out right? and nobody can? The function? moment she leaves, the moment she leaves, I'll be out. <laughs> And the moment I come home, they're running around doing everything. What the hell is going on? Is this supposed to be done already? <laughs> Everybody blowing up hands. Just she's back. Hurry up, you guys. Um, thank you for. I mean, I, I think more people need to see from your perspective as well. D- and that's another thing. Sometimes people think, "Oh no, that's that's why I get Native Hawaiians over there." But you just dug deep into your your culture and your ethnicity, and you thought, "Okay, this is what I gotta do." Um, so mahalo to you both. So Aloha Lives Here is the website. Um, do you guys have one for the Puuhonua as well? That is, or is just That is the one. Okay. If anybody ever wants to help you folks, I want to leave, so I want you guys to leave a part of Puuhonua. What would you tell people how to, how to view homeless and houseless, their perspective? I mean, everybody's trying to... to come up with a solution. I don't think it's a yeah. solution. It's just culture. We For just me, I used to always solution. think, how do you bring aloha back? Uh-huh. You know, like, we never we never had that problem when we was growing up. Mm-hmm. If you did see somebody sleeping on a bench, your parents would automatically tell you, go take him on plate. Yeah. Go give uncle one plate. Oh, he's my uncle now, you know. Today is so different because there is many different cultures out there, and it's, they ain't coming up with one solution. I like it. Aloha back. I'm going to hashtag we need that. It. Aloha we back. We need it. If, if you can tell somebody to look at the homeless and houseless uh, culture in your point, what, what would you leave somebody with? What, how would you convince them? I think I would just echo what, what Twinkle said. You know, remember that we're all people. We all have different stories. You know, um, everybody on the street has a little bit different story, ended up there a different way. And don't forget that we're all human beings, yeah. you know. And that's at the core to me of bringing the aloha back is that connection that Twinkle always says, relationship first, you know. You know what a lot of people don't notice? We do have a lot of houseless people in our community, mm-hmm. but I do have two with full body Parkinson. I do have those that has mental illness. I have one that could not shower himself, and I would walk with him outside, literally have him hold something while I shower him. I would take care of anybody as if they was my family. Mm-hmm. That's what it's all about. If you're joining us, this is the extended version on YouTube. Hit the notification bell. Subscribe. The culture in houseless and homeless. I think you folks have created. I honestly th- think this this can be global. This this concept culture. I think is going to save. And it sounds it sounds pretty crazy, but I think culture is going to save the world. So hashtag Aloha back right down here. Thank you folks so much for joining us. Puuhonua, Hawaii and I.